Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem. to have the president of our United I ask you humbly, Lord, to continue to bless and to guide our president and his advisors. I invoke your blessing, great and gracious Father, on these men and women of the class of 1984, future officers in our Air Force. Give them your in patriotism and in a total dedication to our freedom. It is their time to man the ramparts moment. Come then, Father of us all, bless our gathering with your presence and grant us the joy of your peace. Amen. Colorado Congressman from Mr. Ken Kramer. Council and Mrs. Orr. Chief of Staff, A. Gabriel and Mrs. Gabriel. The Fed Super. The Commandant of Cadet. Brigadier General Anthony J. Burgess and Mrs. Burgess. The Dean of the Met our Command Chaplain, Colonel William W. Campbell. Chairman of the Board. And last. Time does not permit me to introduce them individually, but we sincerely appreciate their presence at this graduation ceremony. It's a pleasure for me, both personally and professionally, to stand here before you, the members of Class Andy, a man who has long been a supporter of aerospace power in the Air Force. He, is an older, he has always been dedicated to the role of aerospace defense and technology in this nation's future. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Reagan. Privilege of my 
pray, Lord. There's been to lead the people. We defend our freedom and this dedication and valor and skill increase so much our chance to live in a world of peace. We guard the flame of peace and freedom. To keep that flame. Your experience is made that to make the future. Guided by honesty, integrity, and an abiding honor of our nation, we serve you well. The need for both. You live with the conditions and pioneering spirit of Rick and Bathory, Billy Mitchell, Spots, Yeager, as a matter of fact, in the past four or five years, they prepared you to take your place in the best darn Air Force in the world. The Secretary of the Air Force and the Superintendent of the Air Force Academy remit all existing confinements and other cadet positions. <laughs> By the calendar, 52 years separate my college class from yours. Yet by the changes mine has seen, it might as easily have been 520. The world which the class of 32 had grown to know would soon disappear. True, America was in the midst of the great worldwide depression, which all of us desperately wanted to escape. Our immediate concern was only 25 years old. Our progress was uh, especially when I was born. God has given us the ability to make something from nothing. In a vital open political economy, the human mind was free to dream, create, and perfect. Technology plus freedom equals opportunity and progress. Now, what about your generation? Where do you go from here? The quickening pace should be generated the belief that the tide of events is beyond your control. No, you should be confident that with wisdom, responsibility, and care, you can harness change to shape your future. We've only seen the beginning of man's space station and to do so within a decade. And now we're moving forward with a strategy to chart the future course on the U.S. space program. Cost-effective access to space with the shuttle. It will mean a lot to me and I'm sure will mean a lot to you. We're graced with the company of a man who believed so much in the values of our nation that he went above and beyond the call of duty in defending. In July 1944, a grateful nation bestowed the Medal of Honor on a soldier a private for extraordinary heroism on Hill 424 near Alta Villa, Italy. The soldier could not accept the award that day. He was a prisoner of war, and his father accepted it in his behalf. Since early in this century, it has been customary for the president to present the Medal of Honor. When nearly 40 years have gone by, and it's time to do it right, a native son of Colorado, certainly a good friend of the Air Force Academy, will forever be in the select company where the heroes of our country stand. It gives me great pleasure to ask Mr. William J. Bill Crawford, formerly of the 36th Infantry Division, to come forward. service as set forth in the following citation. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at risk of life above and beyond the call of duty in action with the enemy near Alta Villa, Italy, 13 September 1943. When Company I attacked an enemy held position on Hill 424, the third platoon in which Private Crawford was a squad scout 
attacked as base platoon for the company. After reaching the crest of the hill, the platoon was pinned down by intense enemy machine gun and small arms fire. Locating one of these guns, which was dug in on a terrace on his immediate front, Private Crawford, without orders and on his own initiative, moved over the hill under the enemy fire to a point within a few yards of the gun emplacement and single-handedly destroyed the machine gun and killed three of the crew with a hand grenade, thus enabling his platoon to continue its advance. When the platoon, after reaching the crest, was once more delayed by enemy fire, Private Crawford, again in the face of intense fire, advanced directly to the front midway between two hostile machine gun nests located on a higher terrace and emplaced in a small ravine. Moving first to the left, with a hand grenade he destroyed one gun emplacement and killed the crew. He then worked his way under continuous fire to the other and with one grenade and the use of his rifle killed one enemy and forced the remainder to flee. Seizing the enemy machine gun, he fired on the withdrawing Germans and facilitated his company's advance. symbolized football supremacy among the Air Force Academy, West Point, and Annapolis. When I think back to my playing days at a place called Eureka College, I must tell you, I can sympathize, however, with West Point and Annapolis. I remember some rough afternoons on the gridiron in which we were winning too many moral victories. Playing <laughs> Field of Eaton. It gives me great pleasure to ask Cadets First Class Marty Lautham, Michael Kirby, and John Kirshner to come forward. squad, representing him with this Falcon jersey. Complete with Air Force One on the front, Reagan on the back. <laughs> President Reagan, for your dedicated service to our nation, to the United States Air Force, and to the Air Force Academy, it is with great pride that today's graduating class designates you, by acclamation, an honorary member of the United States Air Force Academy class of 1984. We are pleased to present this plaque and saber to you as tangible evidence of that honor. I might have someday to use that saber, it's securely fastened. 